Okay, let's pray and start. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for uh, gathering us and let us learn your word and also let us learn how to think and express ourselves. And Lord, um, give us your wisdom and strength so we can get through uh, another lesson today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, uh, look at this picture. Have you ever felt really, really hungry? And how did you feel? Never? <laughs> and anyone needs food and water to survive, right? So last time we learned that um, there are three kinds of life in Greek language. One is a bias, uh, second one is pushik, and the third one is zo. So for bias, we need food and water, air, right? And pushke, we need um, we need to read the books, we need to art, we need to friends. And for zo, what do we need? And have you ever heard um, this word? Uh, Michael, would you please read this quote from uh, Pascal? Sure. There is a God-shaped vacuum hole in my heart, and the heart of each man cannot be satisfied by anything created by uh, only by God, the Creator made known through Jesus Christ. Blaise Pascal, 1623 to 1616. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So this uh, philosopher said everyone has a hole, God-shaped hole, in the heart of each man. So without God, no one can be satisfied fully. So Jesus said, hey, you guys need food for your physical life, bios. But the Bible says, you need Jesus for your zo, your heavenly life. So this is English version. Diane, would you please read aloud? I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. John 6, 51. Mm -hmm. So here's I is, of course, Jesus. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cover the word bread with brown. Uh, where's the word brown? Yeah. So here is a bread. Another bread here. And another keyword is uh, heaven and flesh. So I'm going to cover heaven with blue color. And then one more, uh, my flesh. So this means Jesus is um, be going to die on the cross. Okay, everyone let's read this first together. Hi, Rina, good morning. I'm living, I'm the living bread that came, from, came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever live forever this live this life means the uh, zo z o e the divine life and the bread that i will give for life of the world this is a divine life is my flesh john 6 51 okay william say the verse I am the living bread um, that came down from heaven. If anyone needs of this bread, he'll live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Excellent. Michael. I am a living 
bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. John's excellent, excellent, Michael. Amazing. Andrew, can you say the verse? Um, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats this, uh, eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is in my flesh. Is my amazing, flesh. amazing. Okay, I'm going to cover one more word. Um, here, I'm going to cover the word living. Okay, Rina. Miss Rina, say the first. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Okay, John six fifty one. So remember for your bios physical life you need you know physical bread water food uh, for your soul you need to read a book you need to art you need friends you need a family uh, but for Zoe, for your eternal life we need to teach us that is the message of today okay let's move on uh, today key mini lesson is about how to write conclusion. Everyone just bring out your uh, note or notebook, note paper, pencil, get ready for uh, note taking. Let me change my camera. Hi. <laughs> okay. So please write the date. Today is 29th. Almost November. Wow, we have only two, two more days. October. And then the part is how to write a conclusion. You guys write down how to write. How to write a conclusion. And anyone remember what symbols do we use for conclusion? Anyone? Okay, let's review briefly. Um, so think about here is introduction and body and conclusion. So let's review, recap the whole outline. So what was the first part of introduction? Diane. You need to unmute yourself. Oh, sorry. Like, was it the thesis thing? Wait, wait, wait. wait. Oh, it, do you remember the symbol we use? Yeah. It was it the red triangle. Red triangle, very good. The red triangle stands for what? The oh uh, I I know like the blue squares like the thesis but I forgot what the triangle. okay that, that that's good good Andrew 
So Diane just said there's a red triangle. What does it stand for? Um, a thesis. <laughs> that was a blue square, Michael. A uh, hook. Yes, exactly. Ooh, Michael, thank you. Thank you. So let's draw red triangle. And this stands for hook. H O O K. And though, um, William, what is the next one? What is the next element for introduction? Um, the circle. Circle, but what color do we use? Uh, green. Green, exactly. And what does it stand for? Body, paragraph. <laughs> what? Hello. Oh, it, it's like a several, several different. Okay, it's a connect. Connecting sentences or background information between hook and this statement. Background information. Okay, now then what is the next arena? A blue square. Mm -hmm. what, what does it stand for? Uh Setting? Yeah. Uh, I never used the word setting. You meant background. Backgrounds, we use green uh, circle. Diane, let me get back to you. So would you repeat what does this stand for? Uh, this is the... Yeah, this is statement. I'm glad I reviewed this one. Not many people remember this. And this little, this is statement supposed to have three elements. So when we zoom in this one, Andrew, would you please tell me what are three elements of this statement? Um, I forgot. Michael? Um, your main idea. Beautiful. And then? Um, talk a little bit about your points. Mm -hmm. The three points. Excellent. And then do a small conclusion at the end of it. Okay, so it has uh, three elements. First one, as Michael said, like a main idea, main idea or a main topic word. And this one is your opinion or your attitude. And third one, your key, three key points. Okay. And the three key points going to be each topic sentence in your body paragraphs. Body one, body two, body three, right? And remember, um, each topic sentence supposed to have two or three supporting details, right? William, are you ready? Yeah. Taking notes? Awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then each body paragraph also need a closing sentence. So you recap 
each body paragraph. And remember we drew a stool. So top part is topic sentence and bottom is your closing sentence and three legs stand for uh, supporting details, examples or regions. Okay, now we go to conclusion. Can we write down introduction, body paragraph, and conclusion? So anyone remember conclusion has three elements as well. Diane? Yeah. Yeah. What do you remember? Uh, it was like an upside down triangle. Yes, exactly. Excellent. Excellent. Can you guys draw a red upside down triangle? So it's not a hook, but we need a short intro for conclusion. So signify people, hey, I'm going to start conclusion. So intro for conclusion. Michael, what was the next step? Restate your points. Exactly. And we use a diamond shape. Why? Because this is a little bit, you know, the to the angle, um, restate the thesis statement. So restate your thesis statement. This one stand for this is statement. Andrew, do you remember what's the last element? Um, wasn't it like a pink uh, cloud? Yes. What does it, what does it stand for then? Um, I don't remember that part. <laughs> okay, so you should close. With um, um, interesting thoughts or um, powerful image. Okay, so this is a basic, basic elements of how to write um, an essay, traditional essay. And today we are going to focus on conclusion. Okay, so um, let's look at in detail, what do we need? So number one, um, a conclusion should include Number one, the most important thing is restate your thesis statement. So restate your thesis statement. So remember, thesis statement is like a, um, is your backbone of your essay. State. So this statement is everywhere, introduction, body, and conclusion. But this does not mean repeat. So let's put X on repeat. It's not repeating, but it's a restatement. Your, um, this is statement in a new and compelling way so 
This is the key. And number two, and you need to summarize your major point. And number three, then ends with a powerful image for interesting statement. Okay, now, um, are you guys done so far? What I'm going to do, I'm going to show you two different conclusions, but it has the same thesis statement. And tell me which one is better and why. Okay, just give me three seconds. I'm gonna switch my screen sharing. Can you guys see my Google document? Google Docs? Yeah, give me some response. Yes, okay, thank you. Let me make this bigger for you. So Michael, would you please read this? This is statement. Sure. <clears throat> Ordinary heroes like my grandmother, Jane, possess universal qualities such as courage, determination, and compassion. All right, thank you. So read this too. And think about which one sounds better and why based on what we just uh, written down. Okay, then I'm going to open this document for everyone. Okay, so this is the um, page. Let me insert the bookmark really quick. Okay, I'm going to send you the link. So please come to this document. I'm on page 60. Please come to Page is 60. And write your name on the left. And on the right column, please write why your choice is better. Okay, William is here. Thank you. Lena is here. I'm on page 60. Andrew, hello, are you with us? Yeah, mine's still loading. William, supporting details for body paragraphs, not oh. for conclusion. Mr. 
Yes. What page is it? 60. Or 61. William? Please read the three, three things we just wrote. So which one is re restating the thesis statement in a new or compelling way? Which one summarizes the major point? Which one um, is ending with a powerful image? The first one, the first sentence. Okay, I think Michael is done. So Michael, why did you choose B? Sure, uh, I picked B because it had way more detail and made the conclusion way more memorable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's look at A. A has just repeating, look at this, just repeating the this statement, right? at this, that this statement is uh, ordinary heroes like my grandma Jean possess universal qualities such as courage, determination, and compassion. Just repeating the three keywords. But this one, I still say the same thing, but in a different way. Right. And then let's look at the first part. In conclusion, is not bad, but it's too common. Like 90% uh, of my students start with in conclusion. <laughs> I know this is a safe way, um, but there are many other starters for conclusion. So uh, let me show you some conclusion starters. Let's see. Um, so if you can, okay, everyone, please look at the screen I'm sharing right now. Okay, come back to Zoom. So you can use therefore, Finally, clearly, it is clear that overall in general, as you can see, after illustrating the three colleges above like this, there are many other way to start conclusion and signifying, hey, I'm starting conclusion, not just in conclusion. And then, uh, let's see. And look at the ending part. Diane, would you please read this ending part? In the first one? Yes, in conclusion A. Okay, who is, wait, what are their traits? Oh, who is your hero and what are their traits? Mm -hmm. what, what do you think about this? Well, like, some readers might actually think about it, but it's just like a one word thing. Um, but like many people probably won't even like think about that question and leave off in like kind of a cliffhanger. While mm -hmm. the B kind of like informs them about something 
um, that they probably mm, like yeah we might visualize. Yeah, and I what I found is many students just add a question when they do not know how to how to end their essays. So uh, I would not um, recommend ending any essay with simple questions like this. And uh, Rina, uh, would you please read uh, the conclusion B's ending part? I'm gonna mark with pink. Rina, you need to unmute. Heroes are our beacons, our guides to people who collectively and individually promote peace, justice, love, and understanding. Uh, our world is a better and richer place to live because of them. Mm -hmm. So Rina, which one sounds more uh, powerful or give you more like a strong impressions. I think conclusion B is more powerful than and, conclusion A. And why? Because it's like it gives specific details and mm -hmm. interesting things mm -hmm. about the conclusion, but conclusion A doesn't give a lot of information about it. And it doesn't look like it's interesting to other people. Yeah, right. And Andrew, look at this top part, intro for conclusion. So, so compared to conclusion A, what is the difference? What is the difference? Um, so conclusion B uh, is like introducing like, and also uh, like stating their opinion, I guess. Mm -hmm. But conclusion A doesn't really have Yeah, one. very good. So when you mention like Abraham Lincoln, Spider-Man, um, well, it gives the reader more familiar images or interesting images. And also, um, if you look at the this is statement, only oh, here's like a, my grandma, this is his opinion part in the, this is statement. So he's kind of restating his opinion one more time like this. Okay. And let's see. William, would you read what you just wrote here? Sounds good. I think conclusion B is a better choice because it adds a lot of detail and more collaboration with the thesis statement. Um, it also enters a powerful ending. Lastly, mm. it has good word choices. Very good. Thank you. And then, Andrew, which please read yours? I think conclusion B is a better choice because it restates the thesis in a different way. It, it is detailed, it summarizes the major points and also ends with the interesting statement. Very good, thank you. So we're going to do something similar, what we just finished. Um, if you guys can come page 61 Google Docs, there is another uh, set of conclusions. It's about, so this is persuasive essay, but well, let's try with this. And Rina, would you please read this statement? Number two on page 61. Do I read conclusion A? No, no, this is the oh. Zoo should be abolished for the following reasons. Current enclosures, conversation, the mass, and, an and an alien environment. 
Very good. So let's look at different. Zoo is the topic word, the main idea, main word, right? So I'm going to mark with the sky blue. And this is the opinion, should be abolished, should be banned, should be stopped, right? And this part is opinion, I'm gonna mark with orange. And here's the three key points, cramped enclosure, conservation, conservation dilemmas, and an alien environment. Okay, and then let's read conclusion A. Michael, please. In conclusion, zoo should be stopped for the following reasons. Camp cramped enclosures, conservation dilemmas, and an alien environment. I do not want to go to zoos. How about you? Aquariums are not which different. They should be bad too. Okay, then let's look at conclusion B. Andrew, would you please read aloud? Uh, it is clear that it is time that we abolish zoos. Uh, what we can learn from zoo, a zoo is how wild animals behave when they are confined in small spaces. Breeding programs provide zoos with good publicity, but in fact, most of them are failures. Finally, zoo animals are not at or more at risk of dying from cramped spaces unsuccessful conservation and an unadaptable environment. Okay, so choose A or B, which one sounds better and why. Please type in page 61 bottom. William, again, supporting details oh. <laughs> is for body paragraphs. Oh, I. Um... Michael, I truly agree with you. Yeah, it uses a higher level vocabulary restate the points the smart way. And please add why, what's wrong with the conclusion A? Do you think it's okay to mention aquariums all of a sudden at the end? What do you think about the question? How about you? Do you like the statement, I don't want to go to zoos? So tell me not only why B is better, but what's wrong with A as well.
Okay, Diane, would you please share what you think? Um, I believe conclusion B is better because the thesis statement is more elaborate, summarizes the major points in a detailed way, and moves the audience in the end. Conclusion A, however, does not restate the thesis statement. The opinions are not presented for the audience, but rather as straightforward thoughts. The conclusion also ends with a question and a sudden mention of aquariums, which is not necessary. It also starts with in conclusion, which mm -hmm. is- Wow, what a good explanation. And Michael, how about you? Um. I said that conclusion B was better in every aspect because it used higher level vocabulary and we stated the points in a slow, in a smarter way. And I think conclusion A was sloppier, uh, used in conclusion at the beginning mm -hmm. and added unrelated points and opinions to try and extend the length of the conclusion, which was already pretty short. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Andrew, how about you? Um, I think conclusion B is a better is better because it meets all the criteria to be a good conclusion, and conclusion A is worse because it ends in a question and uses less advanced voc vocabulary words. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's move on. Next activity. Um, if you guys can come page sixty three. Come to page sixty three. So um, I copy and paste from your, uh, one of your essays you wrote uh, September 15th last month. And the first column um, has your name and second column has your this statements, but some of you do not have this statement. So uh, I just copy and paste your current version but uh, right now, uh, today, let's improve your conclusion part. So I have Rena and William. Uh, I don't have Hyuju and Leslie uh, here, Diane, Andrew. So Andrew, I do not have your uh, this is statements, but if you click in your ordinary essay, then you can look at the full text and you can type your this statement now and Michael same thing with you you don't have this statement in your original essay so I'm going to give you uh, five minutes for this and if you want to open your um, original essay if you want to look at the whole thing uh, click before September 15th, then it will take you to the, your archive. Then open your full text and read through scheme quickly and try to have the three elements of a conclusion. Intro and restate your thesis statements in a new and compelling way and close with interesting or powerful thought. So now is A17. Finish this by about um, A825, A okay, A25. Okay, um, Andrew, can you read your this statement? Unmute yourself. Uh, we all have our role, model, role, role models, a uh, person who we look up to, a role model is my coach. Andrew, so look at your this statement. So this statement is usually one sentence. Well, sometimes two, but usually one. So I can see my best role model is your poop for coach. That's good. So you have the topic words. 
And this is your opinion. My role model is my football coach. Then where is your three key points? The three yellow dots, remember? So your thesis statement is not completed. So redo this part. And let's go to Michael. Michael, this is too long. I'm not asking your opinion. Can you condense into one sentence? Okay, just one sentence. This is not a thesis statement. I'm not asking your opinion. I'm asking you write one precise condensed thesis statement. Then let me go to Diane. Good job on your thesis statement. But Diane, your restatement is almost same. It's not repeating, but almost same with your thesis statement. You use the same or supportive. Well, the second part is okay. Knowledgeable about many things. You say, um, know how to do many things. Okay, but you're still repeating many things. It's very common words for like elementary kids. Hey, you're in middle school. So think about how can you like uh, reword the word many things, okay? You can look up a thesaurus or dictionary. Okay, try again. And William, William, listen to me. You said my dad's three main goals, I'm not, the, the prompt was not about your role model's goals. They're asking how your role model influence you. So it's about your story actually. So you need to restate this part. And Rina, you said it's very important that my mom is role model. Then your readers may think, so why is important? Why your mom is, the fact your mom is your role model is why this is important. Why not your father? Why not your teachers? Why not your friends or someone else. So your first like intro for your conclusion can be questionable. So I'm going to rework on your first statement. And Rina, look at this. You, you have a habit after you uh, put a dot, the period, then you don't put space. So you need to fix this habit. And capitalize I. Okay, please rework a little bit on your conclusions and this is statement. I think there. So Michael, comma, cannot connect two sentences. So maybe you want to add like a because. I think they are limiting in effective. So Michael, can you add one more key point? They are limiting, they are in effective and what else? then it will give you three key points. So let's see, Diane, how you rework your... Oh, that's good, plenty, yay. So also think about what other words you can use, obstacles. So here, difficult obstacles is repeating exactly.
I think Michael is a king of vocabulary. Michael, do you have any suggestions for Diane? Instead, instead of difficult obstacle, what other phrase can we use? Could you give me two or three suggestions? Overcame. Uh, obstacles. Roadblocks. Adversity. Mm -hmm. Think. Hurdles. That's good. Hindrances. Complications. Hindrances. Yeah. Thank you for your suggestion. Okay, let me go back to Andrew. Okay, now you added the three points. Good job, Andrew. Okay, everyone, let's move on. So this is the third activity. Um, can you guys look at the screen I'm sharing or you guys can come to page 66. So I'm going to give you a, an essay and it doesn't have a conclusion. So you need to write conclusion for this essay. I have introduction, I have a three body paragraphs, but no conclusion. But, but let's read together. Um, William, would you please read introduction, title and introduction. Hero, a missionary, Henry G. Applander may not be famous in the United States, but he's a true hero who con contributed greatly to Korea. As one of the pioneer missionaries to Korea, he served the country from 1885 to 1902 by exhibiting important traits of a hero such as direct. Education, courage, and compassion. Do I read the whole thing? No. So can you guys see this is, this is statement. Andrew, would you repeat, or would you read one more time that this is statement? Um, as a missionary, a peninsular exhibited important traits of a hero such as uh, dedication, courage, and compassion. Awesome. So here, the trade of a hero, this is the topic, right? So I'm going to mark with the sky blue and dedication, courage, compassion, the three key points. So I'm going to mark with yellow. And then this person exhibit important to blah, blah. This part is the opinion of the author. So I'm going to mark with orange. So these are three elements of this statement. Then let's move. Uh, first body paragraph, uh, Diane. Oh. <clears throat> Dedication is shown in the lives of many heroes who wholeheartedly focus their actions toward their life goals. Uh, wait, do I read the big Yeah, yeah whole, whole thing. Okay. Appen Zeller dedicated his first year in Korea to learning the Korean language and culture. At that time, there were no Korean English dictionaries or grammar books, and not many people were able to speak both languages. It must have been a frustrating and difficult task for him to learn this foreign language, but he kept practicing and studying. Later, not only was he able to communicate with the people, but also he published a Chosun Christian newsletter. He was also dedicated to providing education for young people. He founded the 
first Western style school in Korea, Peje um, Hakang, which graduated many leaders of Korea, including the first president of South Korea, Chang Man Lee. He founded Sung Man Lee. Sung Man Lee. Mm -hmm. uh, he founded Chongdong Church in Seoul, which began in his house. Yu Gan Sun, one of the church members, sacrificed her life for Korean independence. Because of Appen Zeller's dedication to learning Korean language, giving education opportunities, and planting churches, many Koreans came to place their faith in Christ and fight for their independence against Japanese imperialism and de democracy after the Korean War. So in this body paragraph, can you guys see? I have topic sentence, and this is a closing sentence. I have three supporting details. Can you guys see the structure? Okay, let's move the second one, Rina. So second one is about courage. Courage is a trait shown by brave people who decide to do something dangerous or difficult, even though they're afraid. At the age of 27, a penciler came to Korea as a missionary with his wife. At that time, the Western world knew about Japan or China, but Korea, a hermit nation of Asia, was rarely known to it. He was courageous to have gone to to this mysterious nation in the 19th century. A penciler not only worked for even listen, but also for Korean independence. Despite Japan's threats, he worked for Korean autonomy through speeches and letters to the Western world and the education of Korean young people. On June 1, 1902, a penciler was beaten badly by some Japanese railroad Workers because they mistook him for a Russian spy. Even though he was injured, he was determined to stay in Korea to continue his mission work. He courage did not falter no matter where he was and no matter what pounded at his door. He showed what true courage was through his life to Korean people. Mm -hmm. Okay, so see, we have topic sentence closing sentence and three supporting details about college specific examples and let's see michael would you read the last body paragraphs sure with the determination and courage appenzeller also possessed compassion compassion is a key trait that contributes to heroic behavior people help others in the face of danger because they genuinely care about the safety and well-being of other people Appen Zeller had a compassionate heart for Korean women who did not have equality with men and were forced to obey even to the point of unreasonable orders from their husbands. Appen Zeller taught Korean men and women that God created them in his image and everyone is equally valuable in God's eyes. Appen Zeller also cared about the poor people. Family the noble people or high officers of Korea who treated ordinary people with contempt. His heart hurt whenever he saw the depressed and harshly mistreated people. He invited the people to the church and to his school and helped them with the word of God and the Western education. Mm -hmm. So can you guys see here is first supporting detail and poor people. Uh, and here's the second one. Okay. And then, oh, just, and I think, I didn't copy and paste the, another supporting detail and closing one. I'm gonna copy a little bit later. But so see, you have three body paragraphs and this is statement. So please go to page 67 and find your name and start writing the conclusion for this essay. And if you want, you can turn off your video. You guys are going to spend 10 minutes for this.
I just copied and pasted the, the rest of part of last body paragraph. So um, here I'm going to mark with yellow, the third supporting details. And then here I just underline the closing sentence.